Monday. It's August 28th. And the word of the day is batology, which means tiresome repetition often used to avoid answering the question. Used in a sentence, Donald Trump refused to participate in the batology of the debate and instead, he met with Tucker Carlson for some batology. <laughs> oh, man, I was really hoping you had gotten on board with my solution to the problem of the Supreme Court. He, oh, just, that's cool, too. <laughs> you're thinking of clubology. Yeah, so it's sure, very similar. Sure, sure. I'm <laughs> no illusions. <laughs> I'm Eli Bosnick. I'm Heath Enright. And broadcasting delay from America's Far Center, we are the Skeptocrats. On this week's episode, we'll talk about a giant Republican peepee. You'll learn that Eli isn't talking about the debate. And Florida supplements their School of Hard Knocks curriculum with material from Prager U. <laughs> <sighs> but first, the rest of the intro music. Joining me for headlines tonight are my fellow skeptic rats, No Illusions, and Eli Bosnick. Gentlemen, as this releases, we... We'll be vacationing, but also working in lovely vacation destination, New Jersey. So I think we made it. We yeah. made it. Yeah. Life. Yeah. No, whenever I feel pride starting to tip towards arrogance, I simply remind myself like any single objective fact about my life, and that'll tamp it back down in a fucking mm. hurry. Let me tell yeah. you. Facts will do it. So, with all the traveling we're doing, we didn't have our normal schedule this week for doing headlines, but there were two stories that just had to be mentioned. First of all, Donald Trump got indicted again. Uh, again, again, again. Da, so da, that's four. If you're keeping da, score at home, that's four indictments in four months. Wow. This time the charges came out of Georgia, thanks to Fulton County District Attorney Fonnie Willis, who charged Trump and 18 co-conspirators under the Racketeering Influenced and Corrupt Organizations Act, or RICO Act, that's the one they used to get organized crime bosses a lot of the time. One famous example of that happened in 1985 and 1986 when Rudolph Giuliani was the U.S. attorney for the Southern District of New York, and he successfully prosecuted the top leaders of the New York Mafia. Speaking of which, one of those 18 co-conspirators is in fact Rudolph Giuliani. Uh. Also on the list, John Eastman, Jeffrey Clark, Mark Meadows, and the Kraken herself, Sidney Powell. Oh, yeah. Now, look, I don't like any of those people, but I would watch them do the give me the keys, you fucking cocksucker bit from The Usual Suspects. Right? <laughs> Can we all agree we would watch them do the give me the keys? Well, I, I, would, I would watch Stephen Baldwin shoot any two of them at the same time. So sure, yeah. Things. Sure, absolutely. And just in case anyone's losing track of the giant series of Trump crimes, I get it, this particular indictment is all about his failed attempt at stealing Georgia's electoral votes after the 2020 election. He's been indicted for his perfect phone call with Georgia Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger. It was perfect, just like Trump's phone call with Vladimir Zelensky that led to an impeachment. So among the moments of perfection on the Georgia call, we had Trump telling Raffensperger to find 11,780 more votes for Trump. Trump also claimed that the results were off by, quote, hundreds of thousands of votes. Real answer, Georgia did an official recount and the final tally changed by 766 votes. The only moment in that phone call that was actually perfect was when Raffensperger said, quote, the challenge that you have, Mr. President, is you're wrong. This is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and then he and then he explained how one of Trump's people came to a meeting of the election board in Georgia and claimed that over 5,000 dead people voted. And Raffensperger added, quote, but the actual number was two. Two. And so that's wrong. That was two. <laughs> and exact quote. Okay. That is just such a perfect part of that call. Okay, John Ratzenberger. But how many times did those two dead people vote? 2,500, perhaps? <laughs> <laughs> no way he could have 5,000 that quickly. I feel like <laughs> at the end of the phone call, Trump hung up, thought about it for a second, and then went, fuck, they can't even see that I'm winking. That's the problem. That's it. Tyler, can we text only? them a winky face? <laughs> Ty big, big guy, you got to stop hyperventilating all the time, man. It's just a constant noise in the office. <laughs> so... 
Trump might go to jail for another big set of reasons. And his idiot friends, they're in big trouble too. Great, great stuff. Also great stuff is the mug shots we got. Oh, oh God. Just he just they're so himself. good. So good. So did the rest of them. The best. And speaking of Republican idiots who should go to jail, let's talk about the GOP official in Virginia who went to a Little League field and put up a giant banner with a penis on it. What the fuck was that? a Little League field, just to repeat that one more time. The lunatic in question is Central Committee Representative Ron Headland, and his 16-foot-long penis banner says, Biden sucks, and then has the penis drawing right below it. So he's going for Biden sucks dick or something like that, obviously, but the head of the penis has Biden's face on it also. So it's more like... Biden sucks own penis, maybe. And I don't know. That, that's just impressive to me, like especially at 80 sure, years old. Sure. Right. Yeah. Come I mean, on. At this point, Biden could literally bend over and suck his own penis on national television. And half of Twitter would be like, oh, so Biden hates analingus. You cannot ask me to vote for him. You cannot. <laughs> <laughs> also, like. You're like a 16 foot penis is not the own that this dude thinks it is, right? Like, no, no, he's not so quite getting it right. So, penis. <laughs> according to Ron Headland, the banner was a protest against school boards offering sex education. So, so he drew a giant penis and showed it to kids mm -hmm, in, mm -hmm. in protest of that. Got him. Well, aside from the obvious bigotry of assuming that sucking a dick is bad rather than, you know, a truly wonderful act that everyone should appreciate. Patriotic. The details of the art. Yes, patriotic. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Heroes. So the details of the artwork, just highly revealing about <laughs> Ron Headland. Yeah. First of all, I think it's safe to assume that Ronnie has shockingly tiny balls in terms of the ratio. Yes. Right? Sure. Like, yes. Yeah. Also, crazy ratio. Also, the shaft is way too thin for the head, like from an engineering perspective, <laughs> like it, it's not going to work out. It looks like a Funko Pop that's about to break, like it's about to snap. But most concerning of all, apparently the emissions from his penis happen in a spread out mist yep. type of formation. Yeah. Yep, there is like no one single point of origin. No, <laughs> salt, salt no, it's like style. a series series of holes like a garden hose attachment I, it's not healthy what's <laughs> happening good. in his real life yeah, and his artwork not supposed to you, you'd be a little disappointed with the effort if you saw that dick scribbled into the back of an elementary school textbook right <laughs> <laughs> right so apparently at least one sane individual in this virginia town called the police and they eventually made the grown man take down the 16-foot penis at the Little League field that he was using to protest the sexual education policy of all the liberal groomers. I'm sure he's used that phrase. A hundred percent. hundred percent. He's used that. But then just to make sure he was a literal caricature of himself, Ron Headland went home and came back to the field with a Wacky, waving, inflatable, arm flailing tube man in the bed of his pickup truck that said fuck Biden on it. He had that ready. I mean, I have it on good authority that we can get this guy's neighbor's wife to shoot him with an AK-47 if we push that wacky, inflatable man over. So what I'm saying is a plan is forming, everybody. That's, a plan that is, forming. is a reference to a GAM episode from a couple of weeks ago. People okay, who yeah. don't listen to all the shows, just so you know, this is not... Listen thread. to all right. the shows. Also, it's true, <laughs> just for the record. Well, but that's yes, too, we know, might be able it to is. get a neighbor to do that in fiction. This is a joke, but I do hope that happens. <laughs> okay, well, that's the latest from Virginia. And as we all know, it only gets worse as you go south from there. So coming up next, we're going to take an in-depth look at Florida's new public school curriculum. It's rough. But first, a quick break for a word from our sponsor, Policy Genius. Come on, go! No! Hey, guys, what is with the trapeze setup? Eli is trying to murder me. I am not murdering you. You're living out a metaphor, Heath. What metaphor? Oh, uh, Heath doesn't have life insurance? No life insurance? Heath, that's like doing trapeze without a net. Without a net, exactly. Thank okay, you. First of all, don't 
encourage him like that. Second of all, it's just like, you know, a whole lot of paperwork. Okay, it's very confusing to get it all done. Well, not with policy genius, it isn't. Wait, what's... Policy Genius. Policy Genius knows how valuable your time is. That's why their technology makes it easy to compare life insurance quotes from America's top insurers in just a few clicks. With Policy Genius, you can find life insurance policies that start at just $25 a month for $1 million of coverage. Some options offer coverage in as little as a week and avoid unnecessary medical exams. Plus, Policy Genius has licensed, award-winning agents who can help you find the best fit for your needs. They work for you, not the insurance companies. That means they don't have an incentive to recommend one insurer over the other, so you can trust their guidance. Now, get moving, Heath. Come on. Come no, on. Get, no, get. no. Oh, God. I'm sold on Policy Genius, though. How do I sign up? Your loved ones deserve a financial safety net. You deserve a smarter way to find and buy it. Head to PolicyGenius.com or click the link in the description to get your free life insurance quote and see how much you could save. That's PolicyGenius.com. Policy Genius. Because nothing cushions the fall like money. Dark. It's dark. I mean, it's true. No, he's right. It is true. Florida is hot, wet garbage. Literally and figuratively. And they're really leaning into that with their latest educational reform. Thanks to Ron DeSantis and his alt-right cronies at the Florida Mini True, public schools in the state <laughs> are now authorized to use material from Prager U in the curriculum. That is not a university. It should be like a fraud case to use the letter U even for them. <laughs> in case anyone's not familiar... PragerU is the online conservative propaganda mill founded by platonic boomer Dennis Prager. Yes, it is. Yes, if the is. very concept of not coming was a person, the, okay, there's no if. We live in that universe. <laughs> His name is Dennis yes, Prager, yes. and he is not coming come to life. The material at PragerU ranges from stupid and evil conservative bullshit to stupid and even more evil conservative bullshit. For example, there's a whole dedicated section at his U for climate change denial. And that will now be part of the public school science curriculum in the state of Florida. So we decided to check out what that might look like and watch one of their videos. So Noah, what piece of the official Florida public school curriculum are we going to be breaking down today? <sighs> we watched Poland. Anya's energy crisis. It's the story of replacing the bullet points in the fossil fuel lobbyists' memos with the words, and then Anya said. <laughs> <laughs> As a cartoon, fossil fuel lobbyists, correct? And Eli, how bad was this Prager unit? Uh, well, if you love the Saturday morning evangelism of G.I. Joe cartoons, but you wish they reflected that half the country's politicians are now little more than puppets for Eastern European fascism, you will love this <laughs> educational and mandatory movie film. <laughs> yep. All right. And is there anything you'd like to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at. Lots of competition. Yeah, no, I'm happy I got to go first on this one. I'm going to go with best worst contradictory dismissals. Sure. Right? Like, okay. Oh, this, because this is just, they're throwing shit against the wall. There's a lot of spaghetti dripping down by the end of it. But they keep like, they're like, well, you know, pollution is not a bad thing. Plus, your guys thing causes more pollution. Like, which is it, motherfuckers? <laughs> over and over again in their little video. At one point, they make a point about the price of energy and then show us a graph that the price is way back down. It's yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't even back up their thing. They show us a graph that contradicts their thing the next moment. It's amazing. I was going to go with best worst Godwin. Easy, so, easy. I will get to it when we get to it, but they will describe how the global climate change denialist position relates to the fucking holocaust mm -hmm. exactly mm -hmm. it's actually it's actually dumber even than that but we'll get to it we'll get to it uh, i'm gonna go with best worst and sure your friends will hate you yeah think your about, children <laughs> won't want to talk to you anymore <laughs> but think about how abhorrent your message has to be that when you're including it in children's programming you have to say and yeah, everyone will hate you for thinking this and saying it, but... <laughs> However, <laughs> we've made a video. Yeah. That's usually reserved for religion. Yeah. I love how much of this was Dennis Prager just angrily typing like... 
this all angry through a cartoon alt-right Polish girl. So right, it's like yeah. that like weepy thing we always get from Dennis Prager, but with a silly cartoon, it's the best. Mm -hmm. So let's get right into the video. Before we meet the eponymous Anya, we're going to learn a little bit about Poland's history in general. Yeah. And I was like, well, you know, Poland hasn't always had it awesome. For example, Nazis, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We, yeah. we come within like an inch of just describing the Holocaust with a frowny face emoji in this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They also mentioned right at the beginning that Poland touches seven other countries as if to say like, and it has all the cultures of the world in it. So this is applicable to everybody. If you think like, about okay. it, they're basically black, right? So it's, it's really <laughs> give them a lot of points when it comes to this. All also, the cultures of your audience at Prager U, I guess. Yeah. So. yeah right. They, they also follow up their Holocaust thing with communism in, in this false equivalence. They're like, yes, yes, the Holocaust was in Poland. And almost as bad at that, there was communism for right, a while. Yeah. yeah. So, well, Stalinism. So it was pretty fucking bad. But yeah. So, yeah. So, but, 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 but like, luckily, though, one day Poland threw off the shackles of communism and joined the EU and, and hooray democracy. Right. Yeah. And now they're considering cutting coal. But will it work? And I wrote in my notes, we don't know, but this video is about how we'd like you not to even try. <laughs> yeah. Right, I just, I like, but one of my first notes on this thing is like, wow, you know, usually when you see a bunch of cartoon smokestacks pouring toxic emissions into a drab, lifeless gray sky, you're not supposed to empathize with them. You're not supposed to be pro smokestack, <laughs> yeah. You're not on their side in the cartoon. Dennis Prager is watching fucking Fern Gully being like, this Tim Curry guy fucking gets it, all right? <laughs> yeah. It's it's positive. They show us a shot of like people in Poland. They're like, it's cold in Poland and people need to burn coal in a garbage can inside their living room. And they show us this and they're like, this is what we want. Yes. Our movie is saying this is right. good. Don't change that. The fucking liberals want to just end coal and fuck up this beautiful thing we have in Poland that we just showed you. Yeah. It's so weird. Right. Because the liberals want poor people to freeze to death better hooray fossil fuels so then we get we get our title proper right it goes around the world uh anya's energy crisis by prager you uh, this is where we meet anya a polish teenager condemned to live in a world of climate change hysteria right? okay yes. when you say anya do you mean anya and uh, her <laughs> friend magda and aunt zofia and grandpa jacob so it's so crazy. it's an American woman, I'm pretty sure, named Karen doing this. <laughs> Look, the and harder, she's doing the like mozzarella for every yeah, Polish name the way too hard. They pronounce the Polish names the less racist they are. Of course, obviously. It's they so originally rough. just did the whole thing as the intro to Fiddler on the Roof, just that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You couldn't do that in Poland anymore, though, because, of, well, you know, it's fine. Don't worry about it. It's cool. So. <laughs> but but we're, we're ultimately we're being introduced to Anya like the beginning of a true crime story, right? Her and her friend Magda used to walk to school together. Sometimes they would stop at her aunt's cafe. So many weird, stupid details. I don't give a fuck that her aunt's cafe has been open since World War II. Okay. Also, that's highly suspect, right? Like a Polish family <laughs> yeah. who's, who owns a restaurant starting during World War II? <laughs> really? Yeah, right. No, you right. see, the building was abandoned. There was no one. Uh, <laughs> there used to be. What? So. There was. There's Ooh. a whole bunch of a kitchen equipment, but we don't know what happened. <laughs> what are all these bricks back here in dry storage? Oh, you can't no. test them. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and then the, the narrator tells us that she, quote, uh, Anya, quote, likes to write in her online blog. Online internet blog, friend. <laughs> Online.com, <laughs> AOL, CD. Multiple. University. You, we can't say university. Yeah, right. No, we're like, we're like, I fucking, you, you know, offline blogs are called diaries, Dennis. You'd know that if your kids don't talk to you. <laughs> uh, but we learn Anya has a brother who will serve no purpose in this story. I'm like, stop adding family members. This is a nine minute video. <laughs> But finally, after a, a ton of introduction, um, Anya, we, we learned that Anya's school has started scaremongering about this climate change bullshit. 
Yeah, right? she's a regular Greta, whatever the fuck her name is. Thunberg, yeah. And when they say the words climate change for the first time, it is literally accompanied by thunder. Um, right? It's thundercrack, correct, <laughs> yes. yes. Piano sting, a weird sepia tone <laughs> pop scare. Yeah, oh, so Jesus. stupid. Yeah, so she believes in environmentalism, Anya does, mm -hmm. but just for a minute, because her boomer parents, who naturally understand science better because they're old, uh, they have some extremely insightful questions that totally pwn Anya and her stupid environmentalism, and she's going to switch teams here. Right, yeah. yeah, no, her parents tell her all about Fox News and she starts to question this single side of the story she's been getting in school. Yes, they encourage her to look into the fact that the planet has been heating and cooling for years. And I wrote in my notes, has that always gone cash money for the living creatures during those times, <laughs> Anya's parents? <laughs> Do they think we're worried for the actual planet? The planet's well, right, gonna yeah, be no, fine. Right, yeah, no, it's kind of us that, yeah, right. And, and they're like, you know, can Anya explain that? And I'm like, well, if she's sufficiently educated on the topic, obviously she can. And then we get the argument from fucking, but China and India to quo quaid first, <laughs> right? Like, and, and also it doesn't matter if we do it because it, uh, fucking China and India aren't going to curb their use of fossil fuels. So we might as well get in while the getting's good. China murders 50 puppies an hour. Why would Poland stop murdering two puppies it an hour? It's That's not even stupid. As a percentage. It doesn't, even, it doesn't even make any exactly. sense. Yeah, right. Yeah. But Anya realized she was only getting one side of the story at school, you know, like in algebra. So she decided it was time for her to do her own research. On her Polish computer farm. Yeah. Okay, so they almost say exactly that, the do your own research thing. What are people picturing, though, when they say that or when they say it about themselves? Like, she's going to go measure the oceans herself and do a study? <laughs> No, right. she's going to Google stuff. Yeah, exactly. Well, I'll tell you what, she's about to do her own online research on climate change, and that always goes great. So I feel like we can stop right there for a quick word from our other sponsor this week, BetterHelp. This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. And then, what if after Labor Day, they ask you to give a speech at the Easter brunch? You'll have to give a speech. Nobody will like it, and they'll all talk about you, and then everyone will hate you, and they'll say, hey, that guy Eli, is really Eli, dude, it is three in the morning. Who is this? Oh, hey, Noah, uh, these are my racing thoughts. Sorry about that. Now Noah's mad at you. He's going to replace you with Don Ford. They can be a real handful. Well, Eli, if you're dealing with this kind of stuff, have you tried therapy? Therapy? I thought therapy was for crazy people. Noah thinks you're crazy. He's going to throw you in the loony bin. Not at all. It turns out one great way to make those racing thoughts go away is to talk through them. Therapy gives you a place to do that so you can get out of your negative thought cycles and find some mental and emotional peace. I don't know, Noah. Finding a therapist is such a hassle. What if I don't like them? You mean, what if they don't like you? Or what if they don't like me? Exactly. Well, that's why there's BetterHelp. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Well, that does sound good. Where do I sign up? Get a break from your thoughts with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Skeptocrat today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Skeptocrat. Thanks, Noah. So long, racing thoughts. Hey, you guys, you guys okay in here? Heath, what are you doing up? You, do you have racing thoughts too? No, no, my thoughts are doing their, their usual. They should have voted for Hillary Clinton. They just, we'd have so much better world if they'd voted for Hillary Clinton. They knew how general elections work. I see. They've got a point. Yeah. Yeah, they do. And we're back for more of this shit, and we're going to rejoin Anya the cartoon uh, when Russia invaded Ukraine in 2022. Right. So now this is where we're going to slowly argue that if you're in favor of curbing fossil fuel usage, you're secretly on Putin's side. <laughs> yes, because I think we all agree the worst part of the Ukraine war so far has been the increased energy prices in Poland. Exactly. It's made energy expensive in Poland. Right. Um, which they which they demonstrate with the graph that Heath was talking about. They, they show us a graph with the prices. Yeah, they spike in, you know, 2022 when, when the invasion happens. And then they, 
they go back down and they show us that whole thing. And they literally back down. go back down to pre-invasion levels. Yes. Like they like the movie might as well notice and just like slide the frame over to the <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Start trying to so stand in see. front of the right half of their graph <laughs> or something. Turn 2023 <laughs> into a log scale that's tiny that you can't even see. It's so Donald stupid. Donald Trump leans in with his marker, right? <laughs> starts yeah. sharpening it up. <laughs> It's so stupid. At this point, I was like, oh, so, you know, maybe we should all try to have renewable energy that's not dependent on Russia or Islamic theocracies that are terrifying. Hi, you communist. And, How yeah, dare right. you And then the movie was like, shut the fuck up, Heath. Look at this graph <laughs> no, right now. And no. I was like, okay, I will look at this graph. And they're like, no, hold on. Not, not that, that side mm, of the graph. Over. But yeah, but Heath, only 10% of the energy we use is from renewable sources. So, right. So... That means we can't. Its capacity the, is ten percent. <laughs> yeah, no. Let's zoom in on that. That the actual argument we get is we can't increase our reliance on renewables because our reliance on renewables isn't high enough. <laughs> <laughs> what are you even saying? And they they make that that argument that like, well, you know, renewable energy power is not reliable. And I was like, really? It's not. The sun and the wind are unreliable, like compared to Russia, which right. is the yes. whole yeah. point just now. Exactly. The, the volatility is literally prices. what the graph is. It's a graph of the volatility of your fucking thing. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> so, yeah. So, but, but we also learn here, though, that when Anya learned all this and she started repeating the fossil fuel industry's talking points uncritically, her friends thought she was stupid and didn't want to <laughs> hang out with her. I love the language they use for this, too, because they can't be like, your friends will oppress you. Your friends will. D-. They're like they her friends started saying things she didn't quite understand, which means just like then they refuted her arguments. And she was like, Duh! and they were like, oh, all right. Sorry. Um, yeah, no, I don't want to walk to school with you anymore. <laughs> you should move to Florida or something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So, okay, so, but then we, we fast forward to the autumn. Uh, and oh, the, Florida's gone because of global warming. <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> well, we did it. It's bound to happen. Yeah. So, no, so, so we fast forward to the autumn, and, uh, and there's this, like, you know, will there be enough heat question going around because Poland is trying to reduce their reliance on coal, right? And at the same time, Russia is cutting them off from, uh, from natural gas. Right, and I think we can all agree that the solution to the problem of income inequality is burning more coal in Poland. That is their biggest issue right now. <laughs> well, specifically brown coal, but we'll get there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So Anya's neighbors at this point, they have to burn garbage in their homes to stay warm uh, because of you know the, the, the prohibitions on coal, not because they were insufficiently reliant on renewables, <laughs> mind you, but you know. No. No, no, no. Also, uh, Aunt Zofia's restaurant is experiencing trouble because the coal prices are very high. Yes, her bills are much higher. higher. Yeah. The yeah. normally perfectly reliable profit of a small cafe <laughs> is, <laughs> is volatile now. You know, their original seed money, they were paying through the teeth for it, but now. It's Jewish teeth by the Nazis. Yeah, no, Jewish I, I teeth. It, yeah. There we go. We found it. Because it's a Nazi restaurant. Nazi yeah, restaurant. Exactly. Yeah. Um, Sorry, but Polish restaurant that just happened to be occupied by Nazis at the time. <laughs> totally innocent. <laughs> totally uh, act victims, if you think about it. Worse. Really? Worse, because they didn't have the privilege to die. Creators. I always so, say number one victim <laughs> of the Holocaust was the people who lived and, there and had restaurants. Well, what's amazing to me is that like the, the cartoon seems to recognize that we're going like, like I give a fuck about Zofia's Cafe. Because then the movie's like, also, remember Grandpa Jakob, he's going to probably die from being so cold. His, his this, this mention is insane. <laughs> it was like, Grandpa, who has a lot of lung problems, he can barely breathe. What we need to do is get him more coal for his indoor stove, his or else he's going to have even more health problems. <laughs> It was so confusing. The movie almost did that big question mark thing and then had to cut. Yeah. It was crazy. Yeah, no, the, so to be clear, the argument that they're that they're using is that he'll be too cold over the winter without his coal and so he'll he'll die. But they actually say his cough will get worse. And I'm like, oh really, the cough of the septuagenarian who's burned coal inside his home to stay warm his entire life? I wonder where that's from. Unrelated. Unrelated. <laughs> he got 
For your information, he got long COVID because he's not vaccinated. Oh, Noah. Now okay. don't you well, feel like case. an idiot. <laughs> No, uh, no. I'd hate for something bad to happen to him involving an indoor stove. That would be terrible. <laughs> Nazi sympathizing asshole. I'm glad he's dying. <laughs> so, but Anya, meanwhile, is just blogging her little heart out, trying to stand up for those poor, downtrodden oil companies. But nobody really wants to listen to her, right? Yeah, this um, is my best worst, where it's like <laughs> needing to include in your children's program. Your friends and experts will fucking hate you, but hear me out. Hear me out, everybody. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love Cafe. the response they show, right? So the response that she see that we see of like, you know, and people were mean to her on her blog. The response is, your facts make me angry. And that response comes from <laughs> at climate Karen. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's like the the woke bad guy. Yes, yeah, it is. Tweeting yeah, at it sure is. tweeting they, at Anya, who is now converted to the alt right position on this show. Yeah. Right back yeah, to right, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> So Anya's position here now is that energy poverty is the problem. Climate change cannot be the problem. It's energy poverty. Right, it would have to be one or the other. Those don't contradict in any way. Those are both things that can be problems. And the form of that argument is the same one we got from fucking Purdue Pharmaceuticals. The like, oh, the symptoms of addiction are actually just more regular pain that needs more Oxycontin. Right. That's the argument they made. Yeah. The pseudo addiction <laughs> argument that they hired some crazy asshole doctor to be the backer for. Absolutely, yeah. And so, but but ultimately, we learn that Anya's kids won't. Ta- I mean, her friends won't talk to her, <laughs> and uh, and and even that friend that uh, walked with her to school is like shunned her now as well. Turns into Prager talking again. She's like, I try to walk around in Brooklyn where I live, and everybody's like, "Fuck you! You're an asshole who takes ivermectin." Ah, oh, I don't <laughs> get to see my grandkids ever. I I said like. As we're watching her walk through the uh, the school, I'm like, we're getting some dark fucking insight into Dennis Prager's high school years, aren't we? <laughs> we sure yeah. are. <laughs> yeah. But don't worry. Her family have some very apropos comparisons. Yes, they do. Um, because uh-huh. her yeah. dad remembers how her friend saying, you're a fucking idiot, is just like Stalinist rule. Yeah, it was. It was just mm-hmm. like living under Stalinism. <laughs> and that's okay, because grandpa remembers- <laughs> That her <laughs> internet movie blog is just like the Warsaw <laughs> Uprising. Oh my! The literal. Ho- well, I bet he thinks that part was a nice part of history. Yeah, <laughs> he, he did well. Oh. Fucking ass. My own personal Holodomor Holocaust <laughs> is what happened when my friends told me science that was better than the I dumb was thing told I wrote I on was a blog. Incorrect. Just like the Warsaw Uprising. My public school science teacher is. Hitler, Adolf Hitler. <laughs> I have Same. to. I, I feel like I have to emphasize here that we are not exaggerating. That's literally what happens. Her dad's like, "Well, you know, this is just like when we lived under Stalinism." And Grandpa says, "It's actually just like when we lived under Nazi occupation." Environmentalists are like Stalinist Nazis. The end. I'm saying right, those are you- bad. To be clear, because I know <laughs> I explained to you how I got this cafe at the beginning, but yeah. <laughs> so yeah, but she's blogging to fucking fight the oppression against the the oil companies, and and now finally winter has settled in across the land, right? Uh, fucking things are not going great. Aunt Zofia's cafe closed. Greta Thunberg came in and burned it in the nineties. <laughs> <laughs> Greta Thunberg was like, "Should have had a solar cafe, asshole." Glad you're gonna <laughs> die now in the cold. Yeah, fuck you. They have to tell us all about the family's rearrangements. Like we fucking care. It's like right. Aunt Sophia's cafe closed, and you know, Grandpa, he's had to move in, but he sold that Kornotchka chest that he had. You know, remember the Kornotchka? And I'm just like, oh my god, finish what? your children's propaganda. Why are there so many stupid <laughs> details? But then, but by now, though, as everyone's freezing to death for their lack of coal, all of Anya's blog readers loved her, and they shouted out with glee, right? Mm-hmm. And and Magda, her her friend, came back and apologized for trying to murder Zofia with solar power. Right. <laughs> so that was nice. Yeah. 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 And the Polish government removed their restrictions on dirty coal so that everyone could burn lung cancer in the middle of their homes. Yay! Yep. <laughs> Hooray! Putin won! <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> it's like there's some sort of like military industrial 
complex relationship. It'll, yeah, it'll come something to you. Like feels that. like there's something there. Fossil fuels. You'll, it'll come wars. to you. It'll come to you. Come back yeah. to me. Yeah. So yeah. But and now Anya uses her blog to crowdfund extra polluting types of coal for all the boys and girls. <laughs> she, she turned her environmentalism blog into like an Uber coal business that like yes. delivers bags of coal yes. on a freight truck driving around Poland. Well, yep. her brother's freight truck, they're like, and your and her brother, the freight truck driver, now has coal to haul. Like like we were gonna be worried about the brother. Right. Remember when we introduced the brother earlier and somebody was like, this is stupid. It's a nine minute movie. <laughs> well, fuck you. He has a part here in the end. Uber call. Yeah. And then grandpa reminds them they're, that they're always better together as a family, especially as the ravages of climate change make the earth ever less hospitable to human life. <laughs> okay. This literally ends with what the movie believes is a happy ending. And it's like, Grandpa with lung cancer moved into the spare bedroom of our house because coal is back and coal is the best. High five. Freeze yep. frame. And that's the end of the movie. There might as well mm -hmm. have been like an anthropomorphized piece of coal that walked out and gave <laughs> Grandpa a high five or it at just, this point. It pans away as they're kicking the earth itself to death. <laughs> <laughs> Beating yep. it to death like the copy machine in office space. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep, so coal made everything better again, and Poland has no more problems at all. The end. Nice. Yep. Nice. And that's the end of your public school science <laughs> class <laughs> in is. Florida. Oh, God. Have a good time learning about the birth of a nation in history class oh. next. <laughs> Fucking bam, 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 Florida. <laughs> Great. And on that note, we're going to close it out. Thanks to No Illusions. Thanks to Eli Bosnick. And thanks to all the listeners who liked us and followed us on all the various internets, like threads. Please keep doing that. Please keep listening. And please keep telling your friends. And if you find the naive stupidity of our giving away a free show business model to be oddly charming, you can send us gifts of money at patreon.com slash skeptocrat. Just like all the generous new donors, you will be complimented next time around. And whether or not you're feeling financially benevolent like those fine people, if you enjoyed our brand of whimsy and you'd like to hear more dick jokes free of charge, check out our brother and sister shows, The Scathing Atheist, God Awful Movies, d and Minus, and Citation Needed, available in all the podcast places. We just have one last thing. Let's compliment that penist. Special thanks to Ryan Slotnick of Evil Giraffes on Mars. He's the creator of the virtuosic musical stylings you heard today, which were used with permission. You should definitely check him out using the links we'll provide or by Googling the only band called Evil Giraffes on Mars. Until next time, catchphrase sign off. Sorry, there's no noise. I'm talking because I'm flipping to the different document. Everybody relax. Headlines is up next. Everybody ready? Yes, Everybody's good. Love this marriage. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2023. All rights reserved.